Hi, it's Cayman Reynolds. Look at all these dead bees right here. This might be cause for concern, but many times it's not. And I want to just talk about this real quick. This is our nuke colonies here in our package versus nuke challenge. Um, come on up here, Walt. Alrighty, so I pulled a couple of them up. All five of these right here are drones, and many of those down there are drones. For those of you who don't believe that we have a dearth here in North Middle Tennessee, you're mistaken. Now, there's a difference in dearth, and we're going to talk about this more because there are a lot of variables, and this is why blanket statements are dangerous. Uh, you can have a dearth of nectar and still have multiple pollens coming in. You can have a dearth of pollen and have nectar coming in. It really depends on your location and the time of the year and even the year. There's a lot of variables and that's why you need to know what to look for. You need to be able to tell by looking at your brood if they're getting the nutrition that they need. You can even have a pollen coming in, a one type of pollen coming in and the bees still can't raise good brood off of that because some pollens by themselves are not a sufficient source of protein. Corn pollen, sorghum pollens, types of sunflower pollens, even dandelion pollen isn't really that good by itself and everyone praises the dandelion on how special it is and hey, it can be really special up north, so I hear. Down here, it's overrated. Uh, I see my bees on dandelions every now and then, but we have, during dandelion season, we have dead nettle, hen bit, we have uh, French facilia, we have so many other types of things going on. Our bees don't even hardly touch dandelions. And I've, I've seen the pictures from up north, so either you have a different type of dandelion or the type of weather, whatever it is, your dandelions up there seem to be a lot more vigorous than ours. Who knows? There's a lot of variables. So you really got to learn your area, and uh, that's where you know, I can only help you so much. North Middle Tennessee, I can help you guys out to a degree. But there's also another variable, and that's how many hives there are in one location. I've got 80 hives here, and I've got 20-odd colonies down the road. We've got drone colonies. we got mating nukes. And then I know of four other beekeepers uh, within about a four-mile proximity of me, and that's just the ones I know of. So there's a lot of different things ca that can impact the pollen that is coming in and the nectar that's coming in so if you're a, a guy or gal that only has one or two hives and you live even in this area right here your bees might not be feeling the same type of stress um, on the nutritional sites and last year we didn't have the late flow that we did so just consider the year and just pay attention and that's why it's really good to get a notebook and kind of write this stuff down and go out and look at your bees and see what they're bringing in but if you watch these bees with the camera there's going to be no pollen coming in right now zilch however if you were to get out here early in the morning you'll see for an hour them bringing in just a tiny bit of small baskets and that's what makes it really frustrating here is i can't open feed ultra bee dry pollen sub get out of the way from my wife, that bee, and uh, you can't do it because if they bring in just a trickle of sub like that, or sub, pollen, they will not open feed dry pollen sub, which is really aggravating. That's why we feed the patties because it makes a difference. So just because you see all these dead bees down here does not mean that you have uh, some type of poisoning or stuff. I kind of gone the long way around. This ended up being more about the dearth than it was about those dead bees. What you need to know about those dead bees down there, those, I'm starting to sound like my wife. <laughs> oh boy, I'm in for it. So, uh, boy, I lost my train of thought. Train's derailed. So what is going on down there? These hives are healthy. In the next video, I'm gonna be doing an inspection on these bad boys right here. We're fixing to split them too, they're looking great. These queens are laying probably 1,000 to 1,500 eggs a day. I don't know, they've slowed down a little bit, but we're feeding them patties. When we did the last video on those packages over there, we started feeding all five of these. Um, about a three-quarter gallon of sugar syrup and about a pound of patty a piece per week. And we'll be showing you more on that um, definitely through this summer and it's very soon. But what's happening is there's not a whole lot of foraging activity just at all anywhere in the bee yard. And so if we're raising a thousand, just a thousand bees a day, 
we're losing a thousand bees every day. And that's just how it works, especially if, if you're not feeding though, and they need feed, and they were raising during the prime part of the season, 1,500 bees a day, and the queens dropped back because, well, the queen might not be dropping back, but they're cannibalizing the eggs or whatever. You might only be getting 500, 700 new bees coming out a day. So your colony's shrinking in size, but all those bees are dying. And if those forager bees aren't going out there and working real hard, then they can be dying inside the hive. They could be dying um, just walking out the entrance like they do. I've seen it several times where the bees will grab a dead bee inside the hive and they'll fly away and drop it. I guarantee you if this was mowed or a concrete area out here, you would just see bees and bees and bees. And now the one bee yard you see in some of my videos where we have the, the big concrete pad that used to be like a uh, garage of some sort, um, there's dead bees all over that thing. So it's just, there's a, so many variables. Um, just because you see a bee on its back or 10 bees or even 100 bees dead with their tongue sticking out, doesn't mean that because your neighbor went and s spritzed some Roundup on some poison ivy that it's gonna come and kill your hive. Um, young beekeepers, and hey, I've done it before myself, overreact because when you are new to beekeeping, we make assumptions a lot of times based off of hearsay other than um, actual f facts and I, I promise you if I took some roundup and I sprayed this whole fence line around my bee yard my bees would be just fine and I'm not gonna do that I don't really like this stuff but I could and my bees would be okay so thanks for watching our videos and stay tuned for more crazy bee information